Good afternoon, everyone. How's your day? I am positive that you are happy and excited because this is the second to the last day of our five days training in remedial reading. To continue the excitement, let us move on to session nine about strategies in improving the reading comprehension, focus on activating and entering. To start, we have the following enabling objects. First, understand the different activating and inferring strategies in reading. Second, apply the appropriate reading comprehension strategies suited to the needs of the learners. Third, show commitment in ensuring that all learners are able to understand the text they read. Please take note that reading strategies is a broad term used to describe the planned and explicit actions that help readers to translate print to meaning. Strategies that improve decoding and reading comprehension skills benefit every student, but are essential for beginning readers, struggling readers, and English language learners. Within the last two decades, significant progress has been made in determining the most effective strategies for reading instruction. In the year 2000, Findings of an analysis of more than 100,000 reading studies was published by the National Reading Panel. This panel concluded that there are five essential elements of effective reading instruction, commonly known as the five pillars of reading. These pillars include phonics, phonemic, awareness, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension strategies. So now you know. Before we continue, let us have a short game. All you have to do is to fill out the missing letter to form a word given the clues. Are you ready? So let us start. What words start with letter A? and ending in letter G with the given following clues. First, priming the cognitive pump. Second, to recall relevant prior knowledge and experiences. Any wise guess? Yes, you are correct. The answer is Activating. Next, let us have the second word. What word is being described which defines as bringing together what is spoken or written in the text, what is unspoken or unwritten in the text, and what is already known by the reader in order to extract and construct meaning from the text. It has letter I and letter G. Do you have guess? Yes, you're right. The correct answer is inferring. Let's have the third word. A word that described as engaging in learning dialogues with texts, peers, and teachers, showing an interest in learning new things. Do you have your answer with you? Okay. Correct. The answer is questioning. So let us move on with the fourth word. What word is being described as constructing a mental image with the purpose of extracting and constructing meaning from the text? It has letter A and letter I as the fourth letter or missing letter and the sixth letter. 
Yes, you get it right. It is organizing. So it seems that you're getting better. Next, for the last word, the fifth word. Again, it has same letters present, which is letter A and letter I. Clue, it has an acronym, which is SUM. S, meaning shorter than the text. U, use your own words. And M, the main ideas only. You have idea? Here is the second clue. Restating the meaning of text in one's words or one's own words. Any answer? Very good. The answer is summarizing. It seems everybody are hooked. This time, you will be engaged. How? By simply sharing the strategies being used in developing learners' reading comprehension. You may write it in a short band paper, then submit it in the class. Yes, in any format that you desire. Oops, kindly include also numbers one to three questions in this slide. First question is, why do you think each of you is applying varied strategies in developing the reading comprehension of the learners. Second, in spite of using varied strategies, why do you think there are still lots of learners who cannot comprehend? What do you think is lacking in them or to us as teacher? In your own school, what is the useful practice of teachers in terms of developing learners Reading Comprehension Skills For your information, to continue, let us define a strategy. A strategy is a learning strategy like a tactic used by a player. It is a series of skills used with a particular learning purpose. What is reading strategies and how it help us? It help us to monitor understanding of what we read and how we read it. According to Elaine K. McEwan, from the from his from her book, the seven strategies of highly effective readers, and I quote: When the students learn to read strategically, they read to learn. So, to improve a students' reading comprehension, there are seven cognitive strategies of effective readers, and among it are activating and Inferring. So what is activating? Activating is priming the cognitive pump in order to recall relevant prior knowledge and experiences from long-term memory in order to extract and construct meaning from text. What do activating strategies do? It hooks students, links to prior knowledge or build knowledge for lessons, links to lesson content, and could be a preview of vocabulary. When should it be taught? 
Prior knowledge should be discussed before reading the text to help the stage for what is coming. During reading, students should be encouraged to make connections to the text from their experience, and the teacher should model this process using his or her own connections. Well, then after reading, this discussion should center on how the connections helped students to do better understand the text and how the text helped them to build their foundation of prior knowledge. In doing so, we can use varied strategies under activating, such as, first, we have the KW chart or know what we know, what you want to learn, what you want to know, and what you have learned. So KW chart is used prior to study of a new material, a discussion, a reading, or an event. It is done through brainstorming. Aside from this, we also use or we can use the second strategies which is known as word splash. So it's a collection of key terms or concepts taken from the topic. For example, you can see on the screen the main topic which is about ecosystems. And from this word, you can have different terminologies like abiotic, biotic, the omnivores, carnivores, herbivores, and a lot more. So from this terminologies or concept, you can able to define what an ecosystem is. So it could be Ecosystem is a relationship between abiotic, which is non-living, and biotic, which is living community. Okay, so another strategy is using anticipation guide. So anticipation guide is composed of 8 to 10 statements related to study. Engaging students by writing agree or disagree, true or false, having them react to the new information and compare why answers are different from the first. So as you can see on the screen or in the slides, we have here before and after which under this is the word agree and disagree. And in between before and under is a statement. Like for example, the first statement is the fastest way to poverty is job loss. Under this, you can notice that both a students or a student answer agree before and after while the statement is being processed or after the statement was being processed well on the second statement which is the american dream is prevalent in our society you can see that before the answer of the student is agree while after some discussion, a sort of discussion or a brainstorming or sharing of ideas with the statement which is the America, American dream is prevalent in our society, the student changed his mind and he answered disagree. So that's what we call the anticipation guide. There is a statement that is being processed for the students to think critically. Okay, so clear? Next, we have brainstorm and categorize. So in this, brainstorm and generate ideas, then sort them into categories and label. So you will see on this slide 
the different words or terminologies written in the different uh, pieces of paper which is colored differently. So you may ask the students to brainstorm about the given topic and from the ideas that they gathered, they can able to generate and sort those ideas to form a statement or uh, a word, rather a sentence, to describe the given topic or the given concept. So it could be in a color coding form, you are asked the students to sort it out, or in a different uh, categories that you wish to. Okay. Aside from brainstorming and categorize, we also have the activating acrostic as another strategy under activating. So here you see the word mother, which has an acronym of M or a meaning of M as magical, O as outstanding beauty, T as tremendous teacher, H helpful, E extraordinary, and R as reliable and rich with love. So that's the word mother. And we can able to, or the students can able to understand the meaning of mother by just giving them uh, a meaning. Actually, this is uh, being used. We, we love to uh, actually use words or an acronym and give them meaning. Like, for example, aside from mother, are you familiar with the word Japan? Yes, it's actually a country, but we can give a concrete meaning of the acronym Japan. Like J stands for jazz, A, always, P, pray, A, at, and N, night. So Japan could mean as jazz, always, pray, at night. So, you can ask students of different uh, acronym and let them give meaning of each letter. Our students is very bright in terms of that. And that is what we call activating acrostic. Next, we can also use an approach or strategies rather by asking our students to express themselves through writing. Yes, as an example in uh, the slides, the students write and express his feelings to her teacher. And I read. And let me read it. Dear teacher, thank you for always helping and pushing me to do better. I will never forget you. See? Students make a letter to teacher what they know about the topic and tell what they hope they will learn in the topic. So from this strategies, you actually get ideas from your students and then you can elaborate it and so on so another strategy is by actually writing some numbers or let your students write down their response in a particular topic by just letting them or giving them instruction such as another is the number strategy 
Students respond to the following related to a particular topic by just letting them to write their answer to the questions like, What are the three things you found out in the topic? What are the two things that were really interesting? And one thing you would still like to know. From that, students can able to express their ideas about the topic read. Aside from this number strategy, you can also use the treasure hunt. In this, the students are asked to locate treasures at the beginning of the study. Treasures are statement about experience or knowledge related to a new topic. As they find each kind of treasure, they obtained signature as verification. So as you can see on the slides, there are different words or statements that describe a certain person or the likes or dislikes of such person. Probably those are the classmates of this student that we are pertaining to and you are asked them or him to find someone who has allergies or doesn't like pizza or a good runner so in this uh, strategy students is very active because they actually look for a certain classmate to be able to fill out all those uh, boxes in the treasure hunt so they will become interested or interested to look for someone who is really much with the description that is being uh, given by the teacher so it's actually a participative or an active participation the active participation of the students is being observed in this kind of a strategy so another is sitting in a hot seat This is another exciting strategy that we use in our class. I am pretty sure that you did this strategy in your class. So this is done before the beginning of the class. The teacher will prepare in a sticky note four to five questions and place it under the chair. At the start of the class, the teacher will tell to the students that some of them are sitting in a hot seat and they will answer questions related to the topic students who are in a hot seat will take turns answering the question this strategy actually motivate the students and think of a question or rather an answer to a certain question that is being uh, uh, put in in the uh, under rather under their seat so like for example your topic has something to do with the uh, habitat so under their chair they can found or find question what is habitat and they will answer it so from this strategy students motivated and uh, you can able to get their attention by just uh, being uh, ready of uh, the topic that you will going to discuss for the day. Isn't it interesting? Yes. Actually, it helped us to motivate our students in uh, this kind of a strategy. Another is... Think, pair, share. 
So this is one of the common strategy that we use in our class. During this activity, the students will think about questions related to the topic. They will pair up with a partner to share their thoughts. Then finally, the pairs will select one major idea to share with the entire class. So this is actually used by the teacher in English class. English class, rather. So... I think I don't need to elaborate this one because this is, again, as I have mentioned a while ago, a common strategy that we use in our class. Another is sort the sensory detail. So in this kind of strategy, students will use their senses by just uh, understanding the highlights in the sentence. For example, John's face was lit by glowing firelight. So the bold letter is glowing firelight. What do you think is the sense that the students will use in this sentence or a statement? Yes. It's a sense of sight. Do you agree? Thank you. Another is, or another sentence is, In the morning, Samantha awoke to chirping birds outside her window. The highlighted words is chirping Birds. So what sense is being used? Correct. It's a sense of hearing. So in this case, our students can able to think by just uh, uh, used by the use of the highlighted words or words in the sentence. And it's nice. We can able to, uh, we can able to rather, we can able, uh, we can get the interest of our students here. Oops, we are done with the 11 strategies under activating. Namely, the KWL chart. Word Splash, Anticipation Guide, Brainstorming and Categorize, Activating Acrostic, Writing a Letter, Number Strategy, Treasure Hunt, Sitting in a Hot Seat, Think, Pair, and Share, and Sort the Sensory Details. Hearing all the strategies under Activating, I guess the reading comprehension of our students will be improved. But wait, there is another one that can help improve the reading comprehension of our students. And that is inferring. What is inferring? Inferring is bringing together what is spoken or written in the text, what is unspoken or unwritten in the text, and what is already known by the reader in order to extract and construct meaning from the text. Inference. Making an inference can be thought of as reading between the lines of what you read or observed. On this slide, you can see the equation clues in the book plus my own thinking is equal to inference. Here, readers who make inferences use the clues in the text along with their own experiences to help them to give out what is not directly said, making the text 
personal and memorable. What do we infer? Why things happen? Why characters behave the way to? How characters are feeling? You enter the world created by the author. Or, you create images and inferences based on what the author tells you and your own knowledge and beliefs about that world. What happens when you read? While you read, your inside voice makes guesses, finds connecting points, asks questions, makes predictions, or personalizes the reading and uses background knowledge to interpret. As Ben Okri said, reading is an act of civilization. It's one of the greatest acts of civilization because it takes the free raw materials of the mind and builds castles of possibilities. That's why we must read and it is one of the advocacy of our division, which everybody is looking forward to the BRB4 and each school actually is busy printing materials to be used in the reading program of uh, the division where each school advocate and again that is the BR before program of uh, reading program of the division so making inferences in our daily lives whether you like it or not we always do inferencing in uh, our everyday lives like for, like for example if the teacher writes information on the board during a lesson you infer that it is important information that you may need later so you will write it on your copy book and you keep on writing even the single word your teacher is being discussed or mention in the discussion because you in you are inferring or that every information that your teacher given to you is important another is if your mom tells you to carry an umbrella what inferences could you give? You may infer that it will passively rain or the temperature will be hotter than before. Isn't it? Another is if you see your boss arguing with an employer. You infer it is not the right moment to ask for a raise. So every situation that you see or you observe, we keep on inferring. But you have to take note that you may not always be correct in your inferences. But they are assumptions that you make based on the given clues. So don't be wrong about it. Now it's your turn. You already know how to make everyday inferences. So let's look at a few scenarios and infer about what is going on. Situation is, you go home and see your father shouting and a bit violent. Would you ask him 
for permission to go to a party? Why? Or would you ask him for a money? So if your brother acts in that way, he must be angry. Isn't it? For that reason, it is not the right moment to ask for money or a permission to go to a party. So you, we must be very sensitive about it. You are watching a movie and you see a bloody knife. What may have happened? Okay. Can you give your wise guess or inferences? Yeah. It could be. Or the person accidentally uh, uh, the person may be encountered an accident or whatever. So in that simple picture, we can infer uh, or we can make many inferences out of that bloody night. Am I right? Thank you. Inferences as word pictures. As you looked at the previous pictures, you were able to infer things about the scenarios that they presented. And so with this picture, when you read the text, think of it as a word picture. Inferences as word pictures. When reading, there are several types of word pictures the author will paint for you. The setting, a character's personality or emotions, what a character's motives might be, or what the writer's motives behind writing the piece might be. question on the next slide and please include the three questions on the next slide after the articles or the article that you read and then submit it in this class. Is the instruction clear? Thank you. So again, I'll wait for your answer or your output in this class.
Before I end my discussion, I just want to leave, it, leave this message to you. When students are actively reading and applying multiple reading strategies as they read, they are able to understand the text at the deeper level. That's all for today. Pips and thank you.